Hi, it's Peter Beal from Local Land Services at Taree. Um, just introducing you to Josh Hack, who will be uh, doing a short video in a minute. We're going to cover some of the seasonal conditions. So 2022 has been a really wet year. We uh, rain started back in December, but kept going through. And then now early March, we had over 125 mils. It's created right on sowing a, uh, a, a very wet environment, exceptionally wet. If we look at the charts, the <coughs> accumulated rainfall has certainly gone up and uh, the soils remain saturated at the surface most of the time. And that's brought a lot of issues about access, it's delayed our sowing, um, Kaikia has been able to get away and smother what early ryegrass was sown uh, and, it, and generally our whole sowing program is well backed. The other things that are really things that we've learned through that time is that in many cases the sowings failed because things were too wet and um, and really quite a disappointing result for, um, for people who tried to get in early and often they've just had to leave it and uh, come back again. So we just wanted to look at some of the different issues, uh, the season, how the growth rates have been down because of low solar radiation but also because of waterlogging and some of the nitrogen issues that um, Although nitrogen is really expensive this year, we're getting uh, difficulty about knowing um, when to apply it and <clears throat> quite nitrogen deficient situations because um, the water logging actually does uh, reduce nitrogen availability and, and actually increase losses. So we've just got this short video to uh, go through some of these issues with Josh Hack and myself just some of the experiences we've learnt and hopefully um, that'll be a good resource for the future. Hi everyone, how are you going? My name's Josh Hack from Mag Farming Systems. Look, we just want to have a quick chat and um, have a look at some of the learnings and um, some of the observations we've had over the last three months of some of the sowings and success and also failures um, of our winter pastures. Um, it's been a challenging three months, um, you know, the flooding that's gone on up on the north coast and southern Queensland is, is absolutely extreme. Um, last year around Taree here we copped the uh, March floods um, as well and this year we've seen you know well above average rainfalls, extreme conditions, lack of sun and um, some challenging you know environmental conditions to try and get our winter pastures established and also try and get cows around etc. So we just want to have a look and, and see what you know what have we done and what has some of the farmers done that, that has worked and what hasn't worked and what's some of the things we need to learn from um, going forward um, especially with you know the prediction of uh, more wetter conditions to come as well um, so we need to make sure that we you know try and not make the same mistakes twice but um, also learn you know what has worked for some people and what hasn't so you know first of all um, you yeah, know going forward that just the, the, the continual wet conditions that, that we've had this year you know has really been worse than our March floods, which are extreme floods last year. But last year we got the floods, then it dried out, and we were able to get some pasture away. This year, the extreme conditions with the, the um, continual rainfall has really caused havoc at trying to get some success of our pastures to get away. So, um, going into that, so what has that meant? So, you know, look, early on there was a bit of direct drilling going on, and I'd still advocate that if you can traffic or really get, you know, tractors on paddocks and you can use direct drill gear um, and the paddocks can handle that. It's still uh, the best option to try and get that seed to soil contact to get that plant up and going and established. Um, you know, but you know, however, this year has seen more than most that you know, we haven't been able to get any tractors near paddocks, etc. And that's you know meant that we've had to do some broadcasting of seed. Now, when we talk about broadcasting, um, you know. One of the main reasons we don't broadcast is because we want to get that seed to soil contact and we want to try and get that moisture around the seed. So moisture hasn't been a problem this year. Um, some of the paddocks haven't had as much trash on them, so we've been able to go through and um, spread that as well. So broadcasting has been very successful. And the closer we get to winter, the more successful the broadcasting is compared to direct drilling. So broadcasting by far is still a really good tool to use. And um, you know, which way we've done that this year has been whether we've been using you know, a tractor and a, and a spreader, if you can get a tractor on. Um, also ATVs and quads um, with, with other gear and electric uh, spreaders that go on the back and or tow behind type of um, uh, quads um, have been very successful as well. 
and also you know things like helicopters and more so this year um, which has been you know a new addition to uh, the way things are going and with newer technology um, coming along and that's been drones and drones have been quite effective at being able to get across the country as well um, and, and get some of that hectares done so you know all of these things have been all hit and miss um, so we want to talk today about well, what have been the main things that we've seen while we keep on getting failures in those products and, and what are some of the things that gives us a success as well so you know the success for me has been really about where the water has been so when we're going out there to spread our ryegrass or our smaller seeds or, um, to try and get establishment in our clovers um, where we've had laying sitting water is where we've read most of the failures okay so um, whether it's been with the helicopter the drone or spreading with a bike etc etc um, when we've got water laying there and we're putting seed on that water um, and if that water is going to be hanging around for more than a few days um, that's where we've seen that you know we just haven't had the success at all so the, the, the problem is with that and, and Peter Bill will talk more about the reasons for that and the oxygen and all that sort of stuff in a minute but that's been the most um, clearest thing that I've seen is wherever we've gone and spread any seed and there's been water lying or it's had water more rainfall um, in the in that 10 to 14 days um, after that 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 uh, application um, that's where we've seen the failures where we've been able to get some some seed on okay and it might be a bit muddy might be a bit wet and, and that's okay we've been able to get that on um, and get good seed to soil contact so we want that seed to get down into that soil so maybe running the mulch behind or just running some harrows behind or um, you know anything to try and make that seed to get down in the in the canopy um, another tool that's been used a lot this year is, is going along and spreading and then putting the cows in after it for, for one to two days um, and allowing those cows to you know, push that uh, seed through that canopy of thatch if it's there and shake it down into that soil has also been working well as well but where we've been able to get that seed to soil contact and then we've had some you know some sun and some germination okay and we've got it up you know that 10 to 14 to 15 days and out of the ground um, that plant can then start to see the sun and photosynthesize so then it's starting to create its own energy that's where we've had the most success so where that plants come up it's been able to get out to the sun and then even if rain comes after that and we do get a bit of water lying um, as long as that plants out of the water it can handle a fair bit of water and a bit of water logging it gets a bit crook but it's also able to handle it it's that that period of germination that is the most critical time um, that we don't want water lying there for multiple um, of reasons which uh, Peter Bill will go into in a minute so you know the biggest learning for me this year has been you know select those paddocks you know select those parts of paddocks I've been to farms where they've said we're only going to do half that paddock half that paddock and half that paddock because they all go down into the swamp or into a low area and because there's water lying there we're not going to be able to do them for another four to six weeks so we're going to do half of the paddocks and also then selecting the paddocks that you know aren't going to lay water okay so being able to do that is really important so we could have got it away the second thing to that now we've got the grass up and going um, and that's all well and good but it's been an amazing year um, with a lack of temperature and a lack of solar radiation because of the wet conditions that these plants normally at 25 days you know 20 days we can actually go through and give them a quick nip if we've got QQ coming over to shade them um, it's been very difficult this year because those plants haven't had the sun that they'd normally get in that 15 or 20 days and they've been taking 25 30 days to get to that stage um, and that's causing some problems with some shading from QQ etc and normally um, we can go in and do a quick nip and that's the right thing to do if that plant is getting that ryegrass plant is getting shaded okay the right next thing to do is to go and give it a quick nip remove that canopy cover okay and allow that sun back down into that plant to keep growing one of the biggest issues we're doing that this year has been how wet it is we've got pugging issues okay so if we've been having trouble with that shading of that ryegrass we've gone in to do the quick nip we put the cows in to do that which is probably the right thing to do normally um, but what we're doing is is this year is the pugging is actually killing the grass behind them so we're in those catch-22 points where we're sitting there going I don't know whether I should, you know, should, should graze it because we need to stop the shading from the, the summer grass on the new ryegrass and then if I put the cows in there I'm going to do pugging and I'm going to destroy it as well now you know that's just 
the fact of life and we need to work out you know, what's the best alternative there. Um, what I've been doing the last couple of weeks actually is working with some clients to go, look, we've got some rain forthcoming. We need to go and select these paddocks that we're not going to get back onto. We've had a good six, seven days of rain. We need to get that IQ canopy cover off because if we don't do it and the rain comes, we're going to be in a worse spot than we are now. Okay, so it's about hedging up the bets of what the weather's going to be doing, what your paddocks are doing, which paddocks can you put cows onto to spell them, um, et cetera, et cetera. One of the big things that I've also seen this year is the competition. Um, so, um, you know, some of the issues around also the IQ outshading it, but just the competition from even stubble or thatches or rotting down material from the floods, okay? That's really caused a big issue with our germination this year. And as you can see from some, some of the photos I put up, you'll see the difference in the ability for the plant to get up and going and start photosynthesizing um, when it doesn't have that shade around it compared to when it's got you know, a heap of thatch layers or, or straw layers that is gonna cause some of those issues to get those plants going. So what we'll do right now is we'll flick back over to Peter Bill and he's just gonna go through um, some of the issues around um, why we haven't got success in where we've got standing water um, and some of the issues of trying to get the germination in, in those, that standing water and the rotting down of organic matter, etc. When ryegrass has to germinate, it actually needs oxygen from the air and usually the soil air around it. <coughs> and it takes in that air, it takes in water and then it, it begins the germination process. But when we get conditions that we've had this year, which are um, not just wet and saturated like this, but ongoing saturated, if we sow the seed into the soil depth, at depth, that <clears throat> when you get saturated conditions, there's organic matter there that's breaking down organic matter and it's actually using up the oxygen in the water. And so we get a lower and lower oxygen content and it's just not <clears throat> conducive to getting seed to germinate and, and grow because every, not every part of the day, the plant needs oxygen to convert the starch in the seed to energy that produces growth. So that's been one of the major limitations with this ongoing wet weather. We, <clears throat> we get a bit of oxygen and then it gets saturated like this. And, you know, we can see there's plants here on the higher ground, but where it's been just wet and sitting, there's, there's very little ryegrass growing and it's not doing very well. <clears throat> the other factor is if we sow in, and some people have had to sow into these wet conditions, the oxygen content of the, the water at the soil surface is reduced because the organic matter has been breaking down over time. And from my rice experience, you get toxins exuded by that breaking organic matter and that impedes germination too. So this is part of why we've had so, many, so much difficulty this year. In a normal year when it's wet, you get puddles, dries out, <clears throat> not such a problem. But this year it's just been ongoing wet, saturated, with water, low oxygen content. And so the germination just hasn't been as good as we would expect. So we'll talk about some of the things you can, um, to manage that in the next section. Thanks very much, Peter. So moving on. So another thing to really think about this year is, um, and especially as we go into winter, is our nutrient. Okay, so especially nitrogen um, at this time of year is really important. And um, through winter, depending on where you are, your altitude, how cold it is, as to what sort of sources of nitrogen we should be using, but making sure that we do have some um, nutrient availability so we can really get those plants um, to get through winter so that when we get to spring, we've got the most healthiest plants, big root systems, so we can get the most production we can. So um, there's a lot of nitrogen deficiency out there at the moment. Um, whenever we have big rainfall events, we often leach a lot of that or, or have nitrogen runoff as well. So a big one this year is, um, and with, with nitrogen prices the way they are, um, uh, um, quite high compared to what we're normally used to, um, is making sure we get the efficiency and the use out of that. Now a couple of things is the timing, okay? So we wanna make sure we're using nitrogen as close to grazing as possible, um, post grazing, so we can get the most use out of that nitrogen for that next um, grazing period. Um, the application rates is really important. Um, I recommend that you talk to someone or go through the calculations or look up Richard Eckhart's um, YouTube videos where it talks about what sort of rates we should be using. Now that all depends on what type of species of um, pastures you, you're growing, how much clover content you have, um, what's your production system, 
and also what you're paying and what your response rate is. They're the two biggest things. So if we're gonna get a really good response rate, 20 to one, so 20 kilograms of dry matter for one kilo of nitrogen, um, it pays to put the nitrogen on to get that response if we need feed. But if we're gonna be getting low responses and it's gonna be cold and uh, frosty and we're not gonna get those responses um, for whatever reason, that might be you know, five, four to one, um, it may be best not to be applying that nitrogen because we're not gonna get the response out of it. The other one too is what we're seeing here with these East Coast lows and continual rainfall, we've got waterlogged soils, and we're getting deep denitrification, so we're losing some of that nitrogen. And also, if you go out and apply that nitrogen, we get a lot of rainfall, we're gonna lose a lot of that nitrogen, especially if we've already got wet soils, um, and we're gonna get you know, 70, 80 plus mils of rainfall, um, you're probably gonna lose that nitrogen as well. So timing of nitrogen to do with these seasonal conditions is really, really important. Um, there's gonna be some field days coming up on this, um, and we'll discuss it at the field days, and they're gonna be coming up from everywhere from Kempsey through to Taree, Gloucester, and also down at Tokal as well. So look out for those field days close to you, um, and we'll discuss more detail about some of those nutrient aspects um, going through winter, and the use of ProJube and things like that as well. So, just to finish on, I just wanted to, um, you know, really, um, you know, some of you that listened to me talk before is, is I harp on about, you know, four major things um, when we're trying to establish ryegrass or uh, winter pastures. Um, and the first one is light, okay? So the closer we get to winter, um, the less light we're gonna have, okay? So we really need to get those pastures in as, as quickly as possible where we can. Um, but we want that light. So if you're gonna put a, put a seed in the ground or on the ground or, or, or in the soil, we need to try and get that plant as soon as it germinates to get to the light as quickly as possible. So if you think you're gonna have a big thatch layer, don't go and mulch it and put it over the top because you're just gonna shade it. Okay, if you've got a big standing, you know, stubble so high and we're gonna try and get plants up, we're not gonna be able to get that sun down in there. So when you're looking to go and hook the planter up or put the spreader on or put some pasture into a paddock, um, we need to think about that light. How do we get that light to that germinating seed um, once it's germinating and, and um, coming out of the ground? How do we get the light to there as quickly as possible? Okay, and that's gonna be the number one we wanna try, try and achieve. The other one is temperature, okay? Normally early in the year, in March, February, we're, so we're trying to you know, put mulch over the top to protect the seed and keep that temperature down a bit. This time of year, it's the opposite. It's starting to get cold already. Um, we're not far away from um, getting to some pretty heavy frosts and, and stuff coming down around the corner. Um, there's a bit of a cold blast talking about next week. So um, you know, that's gonna cause some issues as well. So um, you know, we wanna try and you know, keep that temperature in the ground and the quicker we can get that done between now and you know, the next two to three weeks uh, before we start getting really cold, um, you're gonna get a lot more feed growing in that period of time and better germination. Okay, so the closer we go to winter, the longer it's gonna take to establish. Um, next one is moisture. Um, I always talk about moisture as being really, really important and, and early on in the year it really is to get that moisture in the seed, to get that inhibition of moisture, take up of the seed to start that germination process. It's not a problem this year and it's, and it's not a problem at the moment. Um, you know, it's probably, if anything, it's too much moisture, which is gonna take that anaerobic um, environment and make it uh, where there's no oxygen. Um, and like Peter Bill talked about, it's gonna cause some of those issues about our establishment. So, you know, too much moisture at the moment in those paddocks is a problem. Um, like the other last one is nutrient. Okay, so nutrient is really, really important. We gotta make sure we've got good nutrients availability to those plants going into winter as well. The one that I've never mentioned before, um, and I'm adding it to my list now, is oxygen. We really need to have that oxygen in the soil for the availability for that plant to be able to germinate, get established and keep going. So thanks very much for joining us. Um, have a wonderful day. Enjoy it. Look after yourselves and hopefully this sun keeps shining. Thanks very much.